Good evening, everybody. Uh, we have made our first signing, uh, Connor Wilkinson from Leighton Orient. So I'm joined by Paul, who runs Orient Outlook podcast. Firstly, Paul, thanks for coming on at quite short notice. Pleasure. Thanks for having us. Good to good to see you again. Good to be talking football again. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, it, the season is sort of fastly approaching, it seems. Yeah, but f- well, f- not that I've got a countdown clock or anything, but about 50, or 50 days, I think, 50-something days. And uh, to be honest with you, I'm quite looking forward to, to watching some of the Euros and, and just giving League Two a break. I think we were saying before we started recording this that it's one of those seasons that, thank God, it's finished and, and it didn't really benefit or suit either of our teams, did it? No, I mean, both, both clubs have had a significant number of players released and high squad turnover. Um, and strangely, uh, we have actually signed one of your players, apologies, uh, signed one of your players who you had offered a contract to, striker slash winger Connor Wilkinson. Yeah. So for the Walsall fans who don't really know a lot about Wilkinson, um, what sort of player have we, have we picked up? You've picked up someone who can really get you off your seat and entertain you, but by the same token, also keep you root, firmly rooted in your seat and frustrate you quite a lot. He's with us a couple of seasons. First season was really uh, interrupted by some injuries that he'd picked up. So we never really got to see this season's version of Connor Wilkinson in his first season with us. Um, tall, commanding, holds the ball up, great feet. Very, very skillful with his feet. For us, he was playing on the right side of a front three, um, out wide on the right, but is left-footed, which meant that he cut back and can't can't really say that he crossed because he was a striker playing out on the wing. So his instinct was to cut in and shoot. So it starved our main striker, Danny Johnson, of, of goals and opportunities. And sometimes he'd shoot when there were bodies in front of him rather than look for that pass to set someone else up or reset and go again. So, you know, he's, I'm not, I think as a general sweeping statement, I think many Orient fans are like, we're fine for those that have been offered contracts that don't want to stay to go. I think it's, it's about getting a freshen up as, as it is for you guys, you know, you're looking for fresh talent and to, and to rebuild and reset as are we. So I think it's, I think it's a good move for, for him and, and, and for us. Um, but I mean, he's, he's scored some tremendous goals. His technical ability is outstanding. Outstanding. I will say that about him. So, I mean, it sounds like we've got someone who's maybe versatile that is a striker, like you said, that can play out wide. Um, yeah. One of the things that, I mean, we've spoken about it. One of the things that I've seen from Orient fans is that whoever was in charge stuck to a rigid 4-3-3. Um, throughout the season. Do you think that potentially that was because Wilkinson wanted to play out on the right wing or do you think it's because that's where he was most effective? Well, probably a bit of both. But rumour has it that he insisted that he played out wide and wouldn't play more centrally. We felt as fans at times that there were... The opportunity to go 4-4-2 was screaming at us to, to do that, but nobody, n- neither Ross nor Joby decided to uh, to go with that option and stuck with that 4-3-3, as you, as you quite rightly say. So whether that's whether that's because they felt that the you know Connor out wide in that threatening right flank position was was you know more effective against other teams or not, I don't know. But you know, from our point of view. Um, it, it stifled us at times, but other times it really opened us up. We had a, you know, goalkeeper called Lawrence Vigaru who was very, very quick and sharp to get the ball up top, and and, and Connor was always that outlet. He was always that that focal point of the team for looking for a quick counter attack because he was tall. He'd win the ball in the air. He'd control the ball well. He'd hold players off. Um, if it wasn't a sort of around the penalty box position, you know, he'd be able to bring other players in and and, and sort of set up to, 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 you know, to attack. So, you know, I think you've got a versatile player there. I guess it just depends how you're going to deploy him um, and what sort of tactic formation, you know, Matt, it's Matt Taylor, isn't it? That, you know, that yeah, Matt Taylor. That wants to go with. One of the things that we spoke about before and something that you, you kind of hadn't heard was that, 
um, Wilkinson has worked with our technical director, Jamie Fullerton, which, I mean, I, I was quite surprised at the move. Um, I thought he would stay this way on or at the very least probably move up to either the top end of League Two or the clubs that are pushing at the top end of League Two already. So I hopefully yeah. think Walsall will be next season, touch wood. Um, or at least the, maybe one of the teams going up or, or a lower League One team. It yeah. seemed a bit out of the blue, but with that connection, do you think that maybe it's that fresh start, but also someone that knows how to get the best out of, of Wilkinson and maybe could see him move into the middle because he's worked with him there before? You know, f- football's not... Football's not a complicated game. It's about people and personality. 80% of it is mentality. If you can get the most out of a player from a mental perspective, i.e. that they're comfortable, they're happy, they're loved, they're wanted, they're being used effectively to their strengths and it, it, it will galvanise that that player and ultimately the rest of the team. You don't have to have 11 Lionel Messi's in your team to win the league. It's more about, and, and speaking from experience from the 13-14 season, it's about having the right type of player in the dressing room to then be able to get that togetherness, that mentality, that, that iron steel of a mentality of you know winning together, supporting each other. Um, and from... Um, from, from a perspective of Connor Wilkinson, I, I don't know what happened in the dressing room. I'm not trying to allude to anything that, you know, I may or may not know. I don't know, you know, about that. But if 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 Connor is um, buoyed by the fact that he's worked with Jamie before, that Jamie got the best out of him before, that he knows what makes him tick, then I think that's 80% of the job done. He's just got to turn up on the day and use his skill and talent to be able to, to affect games positively for you. Um, and I think that's that's fundamentally part of part and parcel of football that's probably quite heavily overlooked. So, you know, from our understanding as well is that his partner lives or is from the Midlands area. So I think there's a lot of boxes that are ticked for him in that regard. And I think from an Orient fan perspective, it was a little bit of a head scratcher from our perspective in the same way that it probably was for, for yours as well. You know, we we kind of expected him to either go up a league or to join somebody that would have ended up in the upper, upper part, you know, above us in the league, you know, because we finished eleventh. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously we know that seasons can happen. I mean, Morecambe has surprised everyone from their finish yeah. sort of two seasons ago to now last season, and it, it's not saying that you know he has joined a squad that is, um, you know, necessarily going to finish in that bottom third, but it did seem a. Uh, an, an odd one before obviously learning that his his partner is is from the Midlands and that connection. But it yeah it seems that like you said there's a lot of boxes being ticked and uh, Matt Taylor said in his in his interview his first interview with the club that he wants to bring good people to the club. Um did you on the podcast ever get a chance to chat with Connor? What was the sort of um consensus of when he was talking in the media? Did he come across well? Was he was he well liked in the fan base? Yeah, I, um, we didn't get to interview him, unfortunately. You know, we are very lucky at Orient that the club media team see the value in uh, fan run media. Um, you know, they know that we don't take advantage. We don't mug the players off. We're we're not serious, serious, but we don't ask stupid questions. We're very sensible in what we ask. We're constructively critical. So. Um, you know, we're very fortunate, but no, Connor, uh, we never interviewed Connor, um, but but he did do a little bit of media for, you know, post-match and, you know, yes, he speaks well, he speaks um, uh, well about the games and, and, and sort of rationale and reasoning in terms of the outcomes or the lack of outcomes in certain games that we ought to have had better outcomes in. Um, but yeah, he, he wasn't one that was really sort of pushed to the front of the of the media queue in that regard. You know, the, the, the boys didn't really sort of drag him out. It was shared quite evenly amongst the squad and they're all, you know, they're all good in front of the camera. So from, from a dressing room perspective, I can't help you on that regard. Um, but, you know, I guess from, from a fan perspective, you know, 
you will hope that Matt will be bringing and Jamie will be bringing in players that will be cohesive, that will get on, that will bond and ultimately play as a team. Because there's nothing worse than having 11 individuals on the pitch on a Saturday. Yeah, I think... Clock in the I afternoon. Mean, we, we really want a team out there that are going to fight and play for each other. Yeah, we... we yeah, and it is that thing of when we had our, our kind of playoff push under Dean Smith, it was it was about the team and and getting that that kind of unit together. Um, yeah. Paul, thank you for coming on. A um, couple of, of facts for you that you might might not have known. Well, you'll know one of them. But um, so Paul runs Orient Outlook podcast um, and Connor Wilkinson actually uh, won their goal of the season. So hopefully we'll see more of that side of him. And the less, clubs. And the clubs. Yeah, goal of the season. And the clubs. Yeah. goal of the season and hopefully less of the grabbing a Walsall defender by the neck and getting sent off in yeah uh, uh, yeah absolutely I mean he has got that temperament to him that you could see him getting frustrated and angry in games and 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 at times sort of lashing out um so that's something that that Matt and Jamie will have to work on with him about that side of his temperament but yeah just google I think it was Leighton Orient versus Carlisle United it, you know we were at home just Google that goal. Just Google and watch that goal. That he's lobbed the keeper from a, about a good thirty yards out. A, a tremendous goal. Well, and then actually brings me on to final point. Do you think he'll receive a warm welcome when he comes back to um, Brisbane Road? Know. Um, he's not left on bad terms. You know, he was offered a new contract. He chose not to for whatever reasons. He's not obliged to tell us. Um, you know, I think a few fans are a little bit disappointed. Most seem to be quite okay with it. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I think as long as he behaves and I think as long as he's, respect, he's been respectful, he said he's had a blast at Orient, he said the right thing. So, you know, look, good luck to him. He, he tried his best for us. Um, he's decided to move on to pastures new. And at the end of the day, that's his prerogative. Maybe he's been offered a good, con a better contract than what we were offering. And uh, th that coupled with, Jamie and the fact that his partner's from the era. So there's you know, always several pieces to a jigsaw puzzle that make up the decision-making process for a player to either stay or to go. It's never cut and dry. It's never one thing or another. There's always different fragments of a puzzle. So, you know, yeah, but, but in answer to your question, yeah, I don't see why not. Great. Well, best of luck for the season. No doubt we'll probably try and uh, chat before it all all kicks off again in in yeah. the normal month of august um but yeah best of luck for the season and thank you for coming on and sharing your your thoughts on walsall's connor wilkinson <laughs> you're welcome good luck <laughs> cheers take care thank you